Hey everyone, it's Emily. Welcome to Mama From Scratch. I hope you're all having a wonderful day so far. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some beautiful spring DIYs for inside and outside. So I really hope you enjoy today's video and if you do, give it a big thumbs up, share with your friends, and let's go ahead and get started creating some beautiful spring DIYs. So the first spring DIY I wanted to share with you is actually this floral arrangement is beautiful and also the vase. This vase I actually found at Home Goods. I believe it was on clearance and it was a neon yellow color. It was a little too bright for my taste. So I decided to give it a little makeover. And what I did was I actually primed it with paint first, kind of tacky. I used mud and dirt and rubbed that all the way around the vase and it gave it this beautiful look to it. The vase was just gorgeous in general because it had that waffle detailing here at the top and it had the grooves already in it. So I just wanted to highlight that and I did this Oh gosh, I think two years ago, and I love this face. It's a beautiful centerpiece. Now, if this isn't quite your style, then you can paint it whatever color you would like, but I think this is gorgeous, and you can use this indoor and outdoor, so it's perfect. Love this floral arrangement. It's beautiful. It's actually just two different types of florals in here. So let me take it out here. All I have in here are these Cosmos right here. This one is from Hobby Lobby. I've been having trouble finding it, but I did find it in January. Um, I just haven't been able to find it since then. And this one is actually from Target last year. So it's a bigger type of Cosmo, um, but it's, both, it's basically the same flower. And then in here, I just have this big <laughs> greenery that I got from Hobby Lobby, and this is called an asparagus um, sprig, I believe. This is the large one, they have two different sizes, um, but it was $15, and on its own, it's beautiful if you just want a pop of greenery for spring, but these Cosmos are my love language. I tell you, these are just gorgeous. So all I do is bend the stems, I um, tell you guys, but they were $3 a stem, so really inexpensive. The Target ones, I think, were $5 a stem. So all I do with these is I interweave them and I put some in the middle and some on the outside, keeping it very basic and simple. Um, but that allows you to kind of um, play with the flowers and arrange them the way you want to. I love the spring arrangement and the vase is just beautiful because you're not going to find this somewhere else. Home goods is almost like thrift shopping. Most of the time, you're not going to find the same thing there twice. And whether you are thrift shopping or you're shopping at TJ Maxx or Marshalls or Home Goods or anything like that or yard sales, if you can find a piece and make it over to fit your style in your home, I think that's wonderful because nobody else is going to have that piece and it makes it unique and it's really fun to decorate with it. Yes, I love sharing products with you guys that you can get yourselves, but sometimes it's fun to share. Um, an item that you can just make over and customize it to your liking, you know what I'm saying? But now that I've shared this with you, let's move on to the next spring DIY. I have this wreath from Hobby Lobby. I got this years ago, they still carry it. I think it's like $10. And I have this um, tray that I got from Walmart. It's under $10, it's really pretty. And I think they sell it in a rectangle form as well. So you can buy whichever one fits your needs and your style. And then I got these florals also from uh, Walmart and they were $3 a piece. They're chrysanthemums. And I thought these were really pretty. Now I will have certain florals that I will never cut the stems and I'll just bend them. And then I have my craft florals that um, I will cut. So you can cut these, you don't have to. You can also um, just pull off the tops of them if you wanted to. And then you can glue those down into an arrangement. It's completely up to you how you wanna do that. And then I have this really cute bunny. This was from Marshalls and it was $7. I got this a couple years ago. All I'm gonna do with this is take my tray. This smaller wreath fits right on top of it. Really, really pretty. You could just leave it like this if you wanted to. Um, and you can add your bunnies or a certain uh, vase in there if you want to. But I wanna jazz it up a little bit and add in the chrysanthemums. So with these, again, you can leave them whole, but since the pop tops just pop off, I'm just going to remove those. I don't wanna keep them just flat. I kinda of wanna have them at a slight angle. I feel like this could use a little extra, so this uh, greenery bundle came from Walmart as well. And I'm just gonna take 
off the tops of these as well. I like having usually two or three different items in this just to make it look a little bit um, more organic looking and natural. Interweave them, you can keep them all on one side. It's really completely up to you. And then you can set a candle in here if you'd like. But I'm just gonna set the little bunnies in there and it makes for a really cute coffee table arrangement or for your kitchen table if you wanna keep that in there and stuff. Very, very simple. So now we're gonna be making a beautiful spring wreath and we're gonna be using a grapevine wreath for this, but you can use another wreath form if you happen to have one. You can find these at Walmart and Hobby Lobby. Um, I've even found them at the thrift store before, so just keep your eyes open for those. They're pretty inexpensive, usually like three to five dollars, somewhere in there. We're gonna be using those um, blush chrysanthemums again, and then I'm gonna be using some hydrangeas. Now, for the hydrangeas, you can get Dollar Tree ones if you want to. You can get Hobby Lobby ones, which are these. You can find some at Walmart. Choose whichever ones that you like the best for your project. And then I'm also going to be using that greenery bundle that we found at Walmart for $3. I like this because I think there's four different things in here. We have leaves, we have a smaller leaf, then we have the little flowers, and then we have a slightly bigger one. So it's kind of nice because it has a variety that you can use in your arrangement to fluff it up. And I feel like with greenery, the more you have for springtime, the better. So let's start arranging this. start with the heavy greenery first and around and I'm just going to tuck this in. Now this one only came with three. If you wanted to, you could actually snip some of these off and split it up, but we're going to try it with just the three for now. And now I'm going to take the other greenery that's in here and I'm going to um, disperse that in between the other layers. Cutting my hydrangeas, I'm going to cut the stems as long as I can go. That way I can still use them in a smaller arrangement on a table if I want to. And I'm just going to take some of the hydrangeas and bend them at the stem where the um, flower petals are. That way it sticks out and you can see it better. I'm just going to alternate these in different spots that I feel like could use a little bit. Hydrangea wreath is looking absolutely beautiful for springtime. You could keep it neutral just like this with the greens and the whites and creams in here. Um, you can also add another color, which I'll show you here in a second. But hydrangea wreaths are super expensive to buy. So if you can make them on your own, I highly suggest you do that. It's a great way to keep costs down because in total, I think I spent just under $20 for this wreath. Now, I've had the wreath form for a bit, so that helps but you can use florals from years past and stuff you don't have to buy new ones just repurpose them and mix them in different ways but i think this is really really pretty so now i'm going to add a little bit of color to it and we can see if we like it from there
Now look how different this wreath looks just by adding the blush chrysanthemums. You don't have to add these specific flowers. You can add any of your favorite flowers for springtime. You can add tulips, you can add poppies, whatever you'd like. Um, but something to keep in mind, if you are planning a wedding, use faux florals for some of your arrangement. It cuts the cost down quite a bit, but you can reuse the florals for decor in your home to decorate later on, and then you have a special memory, which is really fun, I think. The grapevine wreaths can be quite messy, so just know you're gonna have to vacuum afterwards. So here's another grapevine wreath I have. This one is specifically from Walmart, so you can kind of see the little bit different detail. This one is wrapped with wire, which can be really useful for sticking your florals into. So keep that in mind. This is just an, a bow that I had on this one, so we'll leave that. But this is some garland that I have from Hobby Lobby that I bought years ago, probably four, I would say, or five. And um, you can use these if, if you're not using it on your mantle or something for the year. You can use this, tuck it in, and you can wire it in if you need to as well. But you can use this as the greenery for your wreath as well. So you don't have to buy something uh, specifically to make a wreath. So just wanted to show you how you can use garland as the greenery for your wreath and you can leave it just as is. You can add flowers to it, it's completely up to you. You could also maybe add a sign. This one came from the Dollar Tree this year. Uh, I feel like it's a little big for the wreath itself, but that's something that you can do or you could add in something a little bit more on the neutral side if you want. This came from um, Walmart and add that to your front door if you wanted to. A couple of videos back, I shared this video with you, which had the larger version of these planters. I really like these planters, so I bought both sizes because they're a great price. And you can tailor them and customize them to your particular style that you want to do for your home. So this blue is pretty, but it's a little bit bright for what uh, look I'm going for. So I'm going to show you how we're going to transform these and give them a totally different look with a little bit of paint. Now, in some cases, you don't need to sand the outdoor planters, but in this case, I did because I actually tested it out and it kind of um, bubbled up on it a little bit. So I decided just to sand it down. You can use 220 grit, nothing fancy. Wipe that down. And then I'm using this color spray paint that has a little bit of texture to it. And even though it looks black right here, it looks really pretty in person and it kind of has like that shimmer effect to it. So I really like it and you could age it more, but I love it just on its own. Now I ended up using flat white paint for this. I'd probably go with a satin, honestly, because the flat was a little dull. So adding that matte on the very top was kind of nice just for a little different tone. But I wanted to take it a little step further, so I just took white and a brown color and mixed them to make a lighter like taupe color because I didn't have it. And I'm just kind of almost dry brushing this on the planter here with um, kind of like a spotty brush and you can see how lightly I am adding it on. Some spots will be a little bit darker, some spots will be a little lighter, just for a little bit more of an aged look. You could do this just with dirt if you wanted to, um, but I wanted to show you a paint technique just in case you wanna try this with different colors. You don't have to just use this. And then I used a darker gray color and diluted that just a teeny bit as well with some white paint and then I'm blotting it and then I'm gonna apply that to the planter here. And I really like the gray color in it. I actually prefer the gray over the kind of brown color there, but it looks really good. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it this way, but it's a fun idea either way. For the next spring and Easter DIY, we're going to be making a really cute sign. I'm using this water-based sealant and protector. This is great. It doesn't smell um, if you don't have any stain on hand. I really like the Waverly uh, stuff here that I'm using. I'm just rubbing it in. This is a 1x8 pine board. You can use whatever you'd like for this project. I like to use scraps if I can. That way they're um, being put to use. So for this, I just printed out Silly Rabbit on this part and you can put whatever you want. I'm using the Serol transfer tape. Now, if you have a Cricut, you can use Cricut. This is one that I've made in the past and so I wanted to show you how you can do it if even if you don't have a Cricut. Um, with Cricut, you'd be just using some vinyl and doing that, you don't have to paint it on or anything. Keeping it super simple, but I basically just trace over this and the Serol paper leaves a white chalk on it. 
you could just use white chalk as well I'm gonna be using black paint just to fill in the lines and this is how I used to make all my signs um, before I once I have all my words painted in I'm just gonna take this rabbit from the Dollar Tree and trace around it as my guide to create a little bunny on there and I'm just filling that in with some white Waverly paint again you can use whatever colors that you would like just giving you the general idea here Once the rabbit dried, I took this twine, again you can find it at the Dollar Tree, um, you can use whatever you like, you could use ribbon, you could use um, yarn, and I just twisted it just to give a little bit more dimension uh, for his little tail there, and I just hot glued that on, and then I also took about three or four strips of it and then tied it into a bow and added that to the very top of the sign. And now you have an adorable Easter sign and you can put something spring on the other side of the sign so it's double sided. I hope you enjoyed those spring DIYs. Let me know which one is your favorite and if there's one in particular that you want to recreate, let me know that as well in the comments. I will have my last few spring decorating videos linked in the description box below. Just tap this little arrow here. I'll take you right there, including all the links to everything I shared in today's video and to like to know it. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends, and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an upload from me. I'm really excited for you to see the next video, which is going to be my spring front porch decorate makeover. And I I think you guys will really love it. So with that, I hope you all have an amazing day. Check out my last few videos here. Also again in the description box below. And I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.